So let's talk about the semi-obscure sniping FPS game released in 2010 by City Interactive, a company whose name doesn't sound trustworthy at all, and the game in question is called, as you might have guessed, Sniper Ghost Warrior. A compelling title to name a game after, slightly edgy and just perfect for the 13 year old me looking to finally put his new PC hardware to good use. Because one main selling point of Sniper Ghost Warrior was its graphics. You know, the game takes place in this Far Cry-esque tropical place, probably located in South America, thriving with luscious vegetation, crystalline waters furnished with invisible walls, of course, starring farm animals instead of wild beasts, ready to be slain cause, you know, psychopathy. Oh, and lots of wheat bushes and cocaine plantation too. Sounds promising, huh? Wikipedia defines it a tactical shooter and a stealth video game, with the first definition being a lie and the second one being a stretch of the imagination. Sure, most of the missions are stealth based, but the stealth is so poorly executed that when the game allows it, it's more fun to 360 quickscope all your enemies, rather than crouching from the start of the level till the end, the latter being what the final mission entirely consists of, making it a complete joke. It's all about sneaking in the marijuana bushes, and the only cool part about it would have been if you could actually smell the MJ fragrance, but of course, because of digital reasons you can't. So, at one point you reach a vantage point to assassinate the bad South American guy, and that's it, the game is finished. And uh, the reward they give the player for finishing this smelly game is just as pathetic as the final mission. I was in fact greeted by a the end screen, followed by the credits rolling, but they roll in reverse, from down to up. The City Interactive logo and the main menu intro acts like this too, quite a good advertisement for the company. Also, the stealth system is complete trash and it's quite pathetic because I swear, you can put yourself in front of an enemy soldier patrolling the area and as long as you're crouched or prone and didn't make too much noise while approaching him, you are golden. The South America militia must be made up by blind or people with severe eyesight problems because of A. The weed shrunk their eyes to the point that they can't see anymore. B. There was a soldiers with disabilities quota imposed by the government to fill. C. They spend their free time gazing at the scorching Latin American sun. However, although the stealth system is basically nullified by an AI with the eyesight of a mole, but with a name worthy of the best scripted aimbot, I believe that it's better off this way than having to crawl around enemies that possess complete honey sense over the surrounding and that can spot you and thus gun you down in one second. Sometimes this happens in Sniper Ghost Warrior 2, particularly when a section is heavily scripted because the game does not know how to respond to you straying away from the main path. Sometimes it also menaces you that the mission will end in 5 seconds because you're running out of bounds even though it looks like you're going in a place that you're allowed to go. So it's safe to say that Sniper Ghost Warrior really wanted to hop onto the hype train that Call of Duty 4 inaugurated 3 years before with the iconic Chernobyl stealth mission. But of course it failed in doing so. So this squad, the gang, the clique you're taking part of is named Alpha 9 and comprises 3 characters that you will play as or switch to during missions. The main one you'll incarnate 
is a Chad Gigi wearing sniper and is appropriately named Razor 64, a cool military esque sounding name that attributes to the protagonist the quality of being as sharp as a razor, something a sniper eye certainly needs to be. The second guy is Private Anderson, a member of the Delta Force, uh, yeah, just like in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and he incarnates uh, the older, wiser guy who scolds uh, Razor 64 like a good mommy every time he makes an alarm blow up because Razor is feeling invincible. Fuck, you triggered the alarm! Zaytana's escaping in the hover, do so! You blew it! The third one is a local dude, El Tejon, who is an ex-rebel recruited because he's very knowledgeable about the jungles, and thanks to him, the player or you will have the pleasure to being forced into using assault rifles, and the ARs in this game feel like a punishment and torture. The recoil is incredibly harsh, paradoxically the AK has the least amount of recoil out of all the rifles, the muzzle flash take up the entire screen and the iron sight feels clunky to shoot from. Combine this with the crappy job the game does in handling the contrast of colors, making the process of spotting enemies a torture for the eyes, and you got yourself a nice couple of levels that will have you wondering what the hell you're doing with your life. Moreover, if you decide to pick up an AR just for the lols during a sniper mission, you must switch your sniper rifle for it, you cannot drop your pistol. And uh, Razor 64 without his trusty sniper rifles is like uh, my Super Mario without his cap, or uh, Luigi without pussy, or an Italian without pizza. So let's go back to the interactions between characters. There are several occasions where your mate asks you to pick your target and he'll take care of the other, like in Call of Duty. And uh, with all the dialogues present in this game, Sniper Ghost Warrior really tries to make the player care about their relationship with your other mate. However, the dialogues are very bland, the writing is just standard, there is little to no comedic relief, and sure, the game takes itself seriously but there is never a point where the plot pressures the protagonist into tense or difficult situations that could put the lives of this fantastic duo better than Sonic and Tails in danger. So let's talk a bit about the plot, uh, I've skipped every cutscene uh, and so if you're interested you can check it on Wikipedia, it basically revolves around an American squad uh, trying to re-establish democracy in uh, La Isla Truenos, a fictional island located in South America, which uh, nobody cares about, obviously. So you can check uh, Wikipedia The Bible for more information about the plot. Now let's go back to the gameplay. So as you might have guessed, Sniper Ghost Warrior Freedom to move around this enchanting island is basically non-existent, in fact, the game is pretty much on a rail, it's a shooting corridor, and uh, it also doesn't offer at all long range sniping combat, in fact uh, it's mostly short range and mid range. And uh, if you would like to snipe from the long range, any attempt uh, to create uh, your own uh, sniping spot by exploring the map uh, will result in you bashing against an invisible wall. Oh and also I guess you cannot swim underwater, which is a shame given the second main appeal of this game being the graphics and it's probably because the developers were too lazy to render underwater areas. Sniper Ghost Warrior Engine is the Chrome Engine and it manages to recreate vibrant jungles and renders the foliage pretty well. During some sections you might even tell yourself, wow this game looks pretty good, while during most of it I'd say the graphics are mediocre and even bad in other parts because the lightning sometimes doesn't render correctly and to make up for it the bloom is cranked up or a grayish and dusty type of filter is applied to your surroundings and it feels as if you're playing it through the first person of a drunken or a sunstroke dude or both. Ryan. Back to the 
So do you have anything to drink tonight? No, today no, only one beer. Oh, one beer? The Blue Music and the Dusty Cinematics filter are so early 2010s that it kinda feels nostalgic. The worst problem though, to which I have already hinted before, it's the color of the enemy models. I swear, they blend in so well with the luscious environment that spotting them will result in you damaging your eyesight. Like for real, the designer of the uniforms these soldiers are wearing should be hired by every military power in the world, since they do a 10 out of 10 job in camouflaging the soldiers, to the extent that it ruins the fun for the player. Another paradox of this game is that, although the title of the game has the word ghost in it, and the Gideon suit the protagonist is wearing, obviously wants to allude to a silent killer lurking unseen and unhurt in between the palm tree's shadows, the sniper rifle you deploy with in the first mission is louder than the biggest Boeing 747 out there. I kinda dig the sound of this 50 cal Barrett looking rifle, but it makes no sense or wise. The sound designs of the sniper rifles and the pistols is pretty good. Although the ones for the ARs is kinda mediocre. Before concluding the video, I must acknowledge the existence of the expansion Unfinished Business, which I've promptly left unfinished, that came out uh, I don't know when, and that, uh, you know what, uh, this expansion is the testimony of a realization by CD17 that their main game uh, sucked, and that uh, although it's called the Sniper Ghost Warrior, it had uh, no long range sniping exciting moments, which uh, were only available to the player in heavily scripted sequences where you had to snipe uh, the big uh, CEO, the big boss, Elon Musk or whatever. So let's explore this expansion a bit. The first mission of Unfinished Business do sport uh, a long range uh, sniping challenge, but I felt like it was challenging only because of the awful job the game did in teaching the player the sniping mechanics. What the Damn, fuck? Snipers, get down. And as a consequence, I got my ass kicked hard. This scope doesn't do a good job at all in informing how the bullet travels based on the distance and it truly feels all random. And another random and infuriating aspect is that the enemy sniper deals a random amount of damage. Sometimes it halves your health, sometimes it one-shots you. And given that there are quite a few snipers to take down and you have to restart if you die, well, it almost made me quit, and I have 20 gigabytes worth of footage of this part uh, that I'm very ashamed of. Now, another thing about this expansion is that it opens up the maps a bit, making them less linear and giving more freedom to the player, just like in Far Cry 1 or Far Cry 2. Theoretically, this should be an improvement, however the map design of this section uh, is very bad uh, because uh, from a wide and open map it forces the player to pass through more narrow areas, uh, literally swarming with enemies with flimsy and scripted AI that are very hard to spot because of the awful color contrast. One more funny thing uh, takes place in the second level. After having to sneak through a huge ass camp while listening to the guards repeating the same voice line over and over again about one of them having a sister and that he should bring her to the camp to give her some booty camp training. And so, after carefully and silently having sneaked around the camp or else the mission would fail, you finally crawl uh, near the big bad guy bed, like uh, a good creep, uh, and guess what? A cutscene starts and Razor64 starts punching him and screaming at him, 
without caring in the slightest about being heard by the guards. So professional and uh, what a dummy. I don't know who the fuck you're talking about! Talk! <laughs> dummy! Alright! All right. Of course, uh, nobody hears or notices anything. Now on to the third mission, the ones uh, that uh, I've actually quit the game at, uh, leaving the business unfinished. Why? It's because I got bored as hell. First, uh, my mate told me there were only three camps to sneak around, but they turned out to be more than three, and I can't stand lies. Plus, uh, the pathing uh, for sneaking is not so well designed at all, there are enemies on both the corners and in the middle of the map, and no cover at all if you need to ramble your way through. This part is trash and uh, restrictive, and I was bored. So I rage quitted and, and bid farewell to Sniper Ghost Warrior, which was just a mediocre childhood memory. So if you enjoyed the video, 